Hey, welcome back. So I um, picked this thing up at a garage sale, and just from looking at it, it doesn't really give you any indication of what it is. There's no tags, there's no nameplates, there's no uh, nothing. There's four feet here, which may give you a clue. And there is, on the bottom, another four feet. Give you another clue, I guess. I don't know, maybe it won't. And on the top there is a grill. A little bit of damage on these two corners. But it's... Uh, it's what it is. So here, I'll show you what it is. Open it up. It is a turntable. It has a BSR turntable in it. Uh, speaker. And then in the lid. The lid is detachable. get this side to cooperate. There. So you can take the lid off and uh, place it somewhere where you want to listen to it. It's got some more broken things here. I don't know what this is or was. Maybe it was a cord wrap. That's what I'm guessing. Um, but we have our spindle. It was snapped in here in a little holder. Let me put this back together. Okay. We have a stylus, which is good. I don't know if that's the right stylus. It doesn't appear there's a stylus in there. But look at this. It's got... Uh... Here, I'll pull this up. If you can read this, it's in, I think that's German. It says Klang and Lautstark. 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 Two potentiometers. The brand name is a, just an N. It doesn't tell me anything else. Um, I want to plug it in and try it out, but it only has a European plug on it. So I'm assuming this is 220. Um, I'm really impressed with the condition of this. It's like it's brand new. And it's, you know, aside from the cracked pieces of plastic that have broken away, um, it's very good condition, except it has some problems. This tone arm, you can see how it's bent down. I think somebody put their weight on here and pushed this tone arm. You can see how badly it's bent bent here and I don't, I'm pretty sure that is not supposed to be like that the cartridge looks okay the tone arm looks bent down and it's bent at a bit of an angle here this way too so we're going to straighten that out and then we'll get that back but um, looks like a BSR automatic turntable I don't know what this is I guess if you put a record on there, that pushes that button down. This... This will drop your record. And that just snaps in. And then we have the arm. So it's probably a fully automatic turntable. But... Uh, we're going to need to figure this out. Let's remove the turntable deck from the case so we can have a look at some of the electronics inside. All right, so I removed four screws from uh, the wood panel below. This thing has uh, four speeds, 16, 33, 45, 78. And it has a uh, off, manual, on. And I'm assuming, well, let's pull this out. Let's see if we can have a look at what's inside here. 
I'm just going to flip this up like this. Wow. Look at that. Okay, so we have a BSR turntable. C101, A25, PS2065 slash 260. Runs at 220 volt, 50 hertz. There's no adjusting that for 60 hertz. Uh, made in Germany. Here's a little fuse. Can't tell, it looks like it's intact. It's intact, yes. And we have a little amplifier, an AC-180 transistors, it looks like it's germanium transistors. We got a selenium rectifier here, and a big fat filter cap. I'm thinking... Yeah, the transformer is, is what dictates the voltage here. A little trim pot. I don't know why they would have a little trim pot. It's just a basic amplifier. Very, very sparse. Just like a hand, a few components. I mean, you can see this. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 components, 17, 18, sorry, and then the two pots. So 20, 20 components for a complete phono amplifier. Interesting. I'm still not finding any branding information in here about this. Well, let's see. How am I going to get 220 volts? I may have to make up a step-up transformer, but it's going to be 60 hertz. Let's see if we can get this going. I think the first thing I want to do is bend this tone arm back, if I can, without damaging it. It's just a hollow tube. And uh, let's see if I can massage this thing back to shape. What I might need is, what am I going to need here? I don't know. Just how soft is it? Hmm. If I push it back this way first, it's moving a little. Still got a long ways to go. going to the last thing I want to do is break something You know what I might do? I might just remove this head. Because it's all plastic and I don't want to end up snapping something by putting force on it. Let me try removing this head in this cartridge. Let's see here. Grounding screw. Okay. Now we're going to have a problem with the wires. 
It's got quite a bend in it. You can see that. Getting a little better. It's not going to be perfect. Yeah. It's still, still not right. So. It's better. It's better. I think I might have to give her a little more. Still has to go up more. So I'm looking down the, the tube here and I can see, you know, it's straight, 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 straight. Then I got wrinkle, wrinkle, bump, wrinkle, dent. And then, but it's still, it's getting straight. It's straight this way, but it's not straight this way. It still has to go up a little. Eh, I might've gone too far with that. Well, that's actually looking a little better. Okay, let me put this thing back together again. Okay, so this is a ceramic cartridge. You can tell because it's got this kind of a rubber bridge in the middle here between the two ceramic transducers. I'm just looking here. I'm just trying to clean out. Looks like it's all full of dirt and dust. Incredible amount of dust. Well, I'm just going to try some spray to get rid of this. Okay. Now I'm going to put the stylus in. Um, so let me check the stylus with the lens here. Stylus looks good. Okay, so styluses usually have two sides to them. LPS and then your 78. Depending on which way you put this in, right? Just pop the stylus in. There we go. Now it should be resting on that bridge, the stylus, and it is. And if you look at the top, it says LPS, which is right. If you're playing 78s, you'd flip it over, and it would show 78s on top. But we're not. We're gonna play LPS. So that should be good for that. So I have a problem where the to the tone arm, the head head shell of the tone arm is turned in this way. You can't really see it from your angle, but it's down. And if I twist the cartridge head shell back, I can see the entire tone arm is, is rotating, which tells me I got loose screws back here. So I'm just gonna tighten these up. There's only one screw. Let's tighten this up. Tighten up this one. That's a little better. And it's not rotating anymore. Okay, 
Let's uh, try and rig up some kind of power to put some life to this thing. Um, we'll see what I can do. So I got my Widowmaker plugged into my Auto uh, Variac, which is an auto transformer, which can do a little bit of stepping up, not much. And then I got it through my isolation transformer, which also has taps for different volt line voltages. So I'm able to jack up the line voltage here to, let's see, I got it connected. And I'll show you what it comes out at. 160 volts. That's probably about the best I can do without um, making a dedicated um, step-up transformer. So we're going to try the 160 volts on here. And if it goes pop, it goes pop. We're just going to use my Widowmaker to connect this up to the plug. And we'll see what happens. Let's turn down some, let's put a midway. Okay, power on. The amplifier is working. You can hear it. Playing it must be the tone control and the load stark is must be the volume. Okay, we know the amplifier is good. Why don't we have spinny? There we go. Maybe that motor is feels really stiff. Sixteen, thirty-three, forty-five, seventy-eight. Let's go get an album. Anybody remember this? Wings Over America? Three album set. Let's pull out number two. Let's see if we got. Get some copyright here. Okay, so turn it on. Power. Now this isn't going to play the right speed. We know that because we're not on 50 hertz. Fairly good fidelity out of that one speaker. Okay, well we know it works. We have to deal with a um, 
sticky mechanism though. I think the motor is gummed up. That's why he's going extra slow. Okay, so I'm looking at this motor. And it's spinning free. I have a feeling the turntable bearing might be gummed up. But that's that's good. This this motor is alright. Even though it's a 50 hertz. Let's try taking off the uh, platter and we'll uh, take that platter off. Big E clip. Yeah, this is sticky. Look at, look at it. That's the problem. I have to re lubricate this and then it'll work a lot better. That's spinning good. That's spinning good. This is sticky. See if I can get as much as I can off first, and then I'll use a solvent to clean it, and then uh, lubricate it with some something more modern. Okay. better even without uh, lubrication okay so let's get some of this There's a bearing in there and it feels like it's okay. I think it was just the grease on the shaft was sticky. I think the bearing's fine. It's spinning freely. So we'll let's reassemble. Uh, let's try this. Should be good enough for that. Much better. There we go. Let's try one more time. Get a record.
Power's off. Okay, connect my Widowmaker up. This plug has damage here. Can you see that? It's like somebody scraped it on both sides of this prong. I wonder what that's all about. All right, power up. Actually, what speed are we running? 16, 100 why it's running slow. If it's on 60 Hertz, it should be actually running fast. That's a mystery to me. And I'm at 45. If I turn this to 33, that's 33. to say it's working I'll put it back together I don't have a use for a European powered record player I wonder if the speed is low because the line voltage is low but that's a synchronous motor it should be locked on and it should be spinning at the right speed that's a mystery well, we know it works. I don't know how you would age something like this. What? How do you date it? Is there a code here maybe? Here's something interesting. What's this? A little black thing. That fell off somewhere. There's a little piece of rubber. I don't know what that's for. Throw it in the bottom. This case mount here for the is broken off so I'm just going to glue that right now put that back together
Well, it's a glue. And I'll just clamp this until it's dry. Pretty sure I have another clamp here somewhere. I'll look for another clamp and I'll let that set up. So I was just checking ESR on these caps and they're all high. This one here is a 500 microfarad, 15 volts. And let's see what it comes out at. So be careful I don't damage anything. Oh, this one here, it's a 2.4 ohm ESR, which is it should be down around 0.2, not 2.4, so it's 10 times higher. I'm not going to change any of these caps. It was working uh, just fine. You saw it, I saw it. And uh, I'm just going to leave this alone. As a, Keep it all original. I'm still... I was looking for a date code on this thing, and I don't see anything. I don't see anything on the motor. I don't see anything on the switches or anything. It's kind of a mystery. If any of you know what brand this is, with the N, um, you can see here, and it's got German, German printing on the volume and tone controls. And I looked, I looked through eBay, and I looked at a few hundred different record players, and there was one that had the same kind of color scheme. It had the gray box uh, and uh, and whatnot, but it didn't. Uh, it wasn't the same, and it didn't have any names on it. So I, I'm at a loss as to who made this thing. And uh, I'm sure all my YouTube uh, watchers out there, somebody will know something about it. It uh, it's a basic unit. All it does is play records, and it's not even a portable one. It's just a plug-in. Got a fuse. That's good. But uh, I'm just gonna put this back together for now and put it back in storage. I think. One thing I want to check is the uh, the weight, the toner, or the tracking weight. Let's reposition the camera so you can see better. Okay. Ooh, it's over five grams. Wicked. Okay, let's see. I got a different scale. Let's get a different scale. I don't know if this will work. Five point five grams. There's a lot of weight on that little stylus. We could try adjusting it down a bit. But uh, let's do that. So this flips up. So this little mechanism here is, is spring. This is what controls the tension. Because as I flip this down, that spring gets stretched. Now, if I want more less weight on this, uh, what I have to do is stretch that spring more. The spring is under more tension, and if I need more weight on the needle, I loosen this off, loosen this spring off, and less. So let's give it one full turn, just to see. 
just to try it out and see how it does. Okay, get our scale again. Okay, so we need to zero this. Bring in the tone arm. It went down half a gram. Let's give it two more turns. Now we can use this meter. Four point six six, still high, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now. It's a lot better than what it was. It was over five grams. So I don't know if you can see this, but the turntable is kind of cockeyed here. It's twisted, it's sitting funny in the in the in the space. And what happens is these springs. I don't even see that little nub. The spring is supposed to be over top of it, and I think it's from putting the turntable. Oh, this one's off too. Things from standing it up on its side. I think these come undone. I think that one's in. Okay, they're all in. Everything's floating. When you're storing and transporting this, what they want you to do is lock the turntable down by backing out these screws. And what this does is it just clamps the turntable, the floating deck, down to the, the base. See, now it's not... And then you can safely transport it, store it, do whatever you need to do. Pull this out and put it back. Okay, I think I'm done with this. Um, not much else I can do with it. But I do want to know what brand it is, model, year, all that stuff, all that cool stuff. And I'm sure somebody out there in in, uh, in YouTube knows this. So if you do, get back to me. Leave the comments in the section below. And I uh, appreciate that. Thanks. But anyways, I'll, that's as far as this goes. And uh, if I can close this, I'll end the video. Get cords in the way. Torn arm secured. Alright, thanks for watching.